Hello, everybody. Welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy, and today I'm doing a sponsored solo playthrough of Pinchayat. This is a quick playing, family friendly tile drafting and tile laying game where we play leaders trying to turn our barren piece of land into a thriving village in India. This can play up to four players, but there's also a solo mode in the box, and that's what I'm going to be playing for you today. Please keep in mind, this is a sponsored playthrough. That means I was paid to show you how this game plays. If it looks interesting, please check out the description below for more information. As always, I'm going to teach the game as I play, so let's just jump right in. You're going to set up a solo game much like you would for a multiplayer game. You want to get a player board and a reference sheet. Place the scoreboard out here with your score marker. And then you want to take the building tiles and you're going to be removing a bunch of them as clearly outlined in the rule book. After that, you want to shuffle the tiles up and put them in a stack. And you then want to deal out three. These are the old buildings. You want to take those in-game bonus tiles and you can just bag those up and keep them in the box. You're not going to need them for the solo game. But you do want to shuffle up the adjacency bonus tiles and the placement bonus tiles and draw one of each at random. You can then place these tiles anywhere you want on your board. I'll just go ahead and do that. These will provide us with some extra scoring opportunities during the game. You then want to pick out a solo objective. There are five that come in the box, and for your first game, it's recommended to start with scenario number one, a new beginning. In this scenario, a new family would like to settle into your village. The man works at the granary, the woman visits the temple regularly, and their children attend school. So you have a special goal for this particular scenario, which is to build a house, school, granary, and temple adjacent to each other, and also to finish with at least 80 points. In the solo game, we play against the Zamindar, an imaginary opponent who just wants to thwart our plans. So you want to take the corresponding Scenario 1 solo Zamindar discard tile, and that's going to show which tiles the Zamindar wants to take from us. And there we go. Setup is all done. We are ready to begin. We get to start as first player. And the first thing that you do on every one of your turns is you flip over three new tiles. That is the new building row. And now from these six tiles, we get to pick two of them to draft. Each one of these tiles has some points value in the upper left, along with their name. There's also a symbol to determine what type of building it is. The yellow buildings are general, the blue are commercial, the green are residential, the red are industrial, and the purple are utility buildings. That's important because we want to keep all of the different types of buildings together as much as we can, because at the end of the game, we're going to score two points for each building in a largest contiguous grouping of each of the four different types of buildings, not including the general. So if we can, we're going to be trying to keep our blue buildings all together and our green and our red all bunched up together. Each building also has a little special way that it scores shown at the bottom. And every single tile and how it's scored is all laid out here on our reference sheet. For example, here we have a pottery building and it says below that it'll get plus one point for being next to the river. And up here on the top of our board is the river. So we have four spaces here that we could place that pottery to get an additional point. And you can see here the quarry, it'll actually be worth minus two points if it's next to the farm. And along the right hand side of our board is the farm. So we have four spots here that are adjacent to the farm. We definitely don't want to put a quarry on either of those four spaces if we can. We also have four spaces here in the middle that are considered the town center. And some of these buildings might score more points for being in the town center. The purple buildings are unique. We actually have both of the two different types of uh, purple buildings out. They not only score, but they give you an ongoing special ability when you add them to your village. The post office will let us draft our tiles from now on 
from the six that are face up here, as well as whatever is on top of the discard pile, giving us a little bit extra flexibility in, in how we draft. The railroad station gives you the opportunity to move one of your previously placed buildings once during the game. It's a one-time ability. You can move something you've already placed to a new location. You're going to get to see how all that stuff works as we go. I think I'm going to go ahead and get a well and this quarry. I now need to take the buildings that are in the new building row and place them down in the old building row. And I can place them wherever I want, but when I'm done, there must be three full columns of tiles. I can't keep these empty spaces. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come bring that one there, bring that one there, and now for this pottery, I could place it in any of these. I'll put it right there. You want to stack it so that you can see what the tile is below it. And now I get to place these two onto my board wherever I want and then score. So I think I'm going to put the well right here and it's going to earn me one point. It would be negative one if it was adjacent to the river, which it's not. And it'll be plus two points for every house that is adjacent to it. Well, there isn't one there yet, so it's only going to be worth one point. But if I put a house adjacent to it in the future, I'll be able to score those two points for each one. Now this quarry, I'm going to put right here. It's worth three points. It would be worth minus two points if it was near a farm. But I also put it on this tile that says build a industrial building right here, and you'll get two points. So there we go, we got a total of five points for that one. The game's gonna end once we've completely filled our board, and by that point we want to have at least 80 points. And there we go, that was the end of our turn. Now it's Zamindar's turn, and the first thing that they do is, what we do, place out three new tiles. They then want to discard two of those tiles, and they do it in a very specific way, and it's all outlined here in the rule book, which I like to have handy. The first thing they want to do is to try to discard a tile that's on their list. So first off, if there was a temple, they discard that one, then a granary, then a house, and then a school. And there we go, there is a school right there, so they're going to take that tile and just discard it. After that, they want to discard the leftmost tile in the new building row. If they had not discarded a tile that was on their list, then they would discard the two most left new buildings. They then need to take the new buildings and bring them down to the old buildings. And again, they're going to do this in a very specific way. First, they're going to take the leftmost new building and they're going to move it down first, filling any vacant columns that there might be. In this case, there aren't any vacant columns, so instead, they're going to place it on the column that has the most tiles. And if there were a tie, they would do the one furthest to the left. So in this case, they're going to place that right there. Now, if there had been a second new building up there, they would have just put it to the right of the tile that they just placed to the right column. And that's it, that's all Zandamar does. Now it's a shame that he took that school away because we need a school for our scenario because we have to create this little grouping of a house school, granary, and a temple. But there's a few schools in there, so I think we should be all right. It's back to us, we reveal three new tiles. And now when we're selecting, we can select the topmost tile, so we can get that flower stall if we want. And in fact, we could take that flower stall and then also take the pottery underneath it if we wanted to. But I see that a house just came up, so we definitely want that house. And I'm wondering if we want the post office just so we can take from the top of the discard pile. That could be helpful. Um, sure, let's get the post office. Okay, so now we need to fill up that spot. I think I'll fill that up. Eh, let's fill it up with the flower stall. 
And then I'll put that handed house right there. And now I want to put the house right here on this spot. It's worth one point. It's worth two more points if it's next to the river, which it will be. It'd be worth an additional point if it was adjacent to a school. But the house itself is going to be worth three points. And then this well is two more points if it is adjacent to a house. So altogether, that's five more points. And let's tuck this post office maybe down here. We want it away from the river. It's going to be worth two points. And now when we're selecting, we can also choose from the top of the discard pile. So that's that's great. Okay, Zamandar goes. There's no temple. There's no granary. There's no house because we took it. And there's no school. So none of the tiles that they want are there. So instead, they're just going to discard the two leftmost new tiles. And then for this one, they want to put it on the one that has the most. So they're going to put it right here. And any time one of these uh, stacks has three tiles in it, you discard that entire stack and replace it. There we go. Back to us. Oh man, not what we want here. We would really like to get a bunch of houses because we're gonna get a point for every house built. But unfortunately, Zamandar wants to take houses from us as well. And because of our post office, we could also select that flower shop that's on the discard pile. Okay, I think we're gonna take a little bit of a risk here. We're gonna take this flower mill and I think we're gonna take the flower stall. So we're using the post office right away. Don't need that. Let's go ahead and just put those like that. And now I want to put the flour mill right here. That's going to be two points now, but I'm hoping to put a granary right there. And when I do, it'll be worth two more points. And likewise, I'm going to put the flower stall right there. That's only going to be worth one point. But I'm planning on putting a temple right there. <laughs> so hopefully we can make that happen. Oh, and that's a shame. So right off the bat, house came out. Zamandar wants to take that one. And then we'll do the leftmost remaining tile. And then it's going to place this one over here. You can see how fast uh, Zamandar's turns can be. Whoa, okay, here we go. That's what we wanted to see. That is exactly what we wanted to see. So we're gonna take the school and the house and let's place this house over here. That's probably gonna get taken. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to put the school right here. The school's only worth one point, but we get an additional point because of the house being next to the school. So that's two points. And then we're going to place this house right here. It's worth a point, two points for being next to the river, and one point for being next to the school. So that's four points. And there we go. We now have a house and a school. All we need is to get the granary and the temple. And we're golden. Oh, wow. So we have the granary and the temple came out. It looks like the temple is the most desirable for Zamandar, so he's gonna discard that and then discard the leftmost. He doesn't go after both of them. He just takes one and then the leftmost. So he's leaving the granary and he's leaving the house. That's good for us. And he's gonna place this right there.
Okay, this is perfect for us. Ooh, or there's so many granaries out there, we could take the temple. It's under that quarry. Ooh, that's a good idea, I think. Just to make sure we get this temple. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So we're gonna take basically the top two from the discard. Now the question is, Put that there. This here. Ooh, wait a minute. Yeah, no, we want to put this over here. And that, like that. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and place this here. That'll be worth three points. And we'll put this temple right here. That's going to be three plus one for being in the village center. And it would be minus one if it was next to an industry, but it's not. So that's also going to be four points. Okay, so definitely wants this. I'm going to discard that. And then the leftmost. Oh, and then is going to take this, put it in the one that has the most, and it's going to go to this left one. And then is going to do the same thing for this. Going like that. I should have actually placed that tile in the second column. As I said earlier, the first tile will go either to a vacant spot or to the column that has the most tiles. If there's a second tile that needs to go into the old buildings, it will go to whichever column is to the right of the first tile. So because the first tile was in the first column, the second tile should have gone to the second column. Luckily, because of our post office, we can grab that granary and we can grab the house. This post office has come in really handy. So this is going to go right here. It's three plus one for being next to the farm. That's four. And then boom, plus two here. So that's six. And then I just noticed plus two here. We didn't get that for our flower stall when we put that temple in. So we should be getting two more points. Okay, there we go. And now we put this house here. One plus two for being next to the river. So that's going to be three. Okay, we have half the points that we need, but now we have our completed little area here. School, house, temple, and granary all next to each other. We're golden. And let's go ahead, do something like that. No, actually, I like that. Something like that. And now that our stack of tiles has run out, we have to shuffle up the discards and make a new stack. Okay, Zamadar really wants to get rid of those temples. And that... That goes like that, because that is they're all tied. You go to the furthest left, and then this one's going to go to the right of it. There we go. Okay, I think I want that. The granary, that'll go great right there. That's perfect. And then maybe that pottery. Yeah, look at this pottery. Put this post office here. We'll put the medical here. Get rid of those. Put that there. Okay, so this goes here. Three plus one, that's four. And then plus two for the flour mill, that's six.
And then this, I'm going to place on this. And now, when you place something on this spot, you get to score it right away. And this says we're going to get one point for every house that we've built. We've built three houses, so we're going to get three additional points. So that's going to be three. We're not next to the river, so we don't get that. But three plus three, six points. And we went once around, so we now have 52 points. Not too bad. They like the house slightly more than the school. And then that's going to come here. And now this is our last grouping here. I think we'll go ahead and get the restaurant and we'll get the wood shop. The restaurant can go here. That'll just be worth two points. And the wood shop can come here and it'll just be worth three points because it's not next to the farm. And there we go, we filled up our board. So now we just have final scoring. In the solo game, the final scoring is very simple. For each of the four colors, not including yellow, so for the commercial, residential, industrial, and utility buildings, we're going to look at our largest group, and we're going to get two points for every building in that group. And we've done excellently doing that. So basically, we're going to get two points for every one of these buildings except for these two yellow ones. 2, 4, 6, 8... 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. We're getting 28 points. That's taking us here to 85 points. And there we go. We have won scenario one. We have created our little cluster of a house, a school, a granary, and a temple. And we scored 80 or more points. We have created a wonderful village despite Zamindar's constant attempts to thwart us. Keep in mind there are four other scenarios in the box, each of that seemed to get progressively harder. So there you go, that was a sponsored playthrough of Panchayat. If you'd like more information about the game, please check the description below. But until next time, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.